Hey, nice students. How are we doing today? It's a good day. Looking alive. Here we go. New subject. Some of you, this may be exactly what you want to see when you're talking about astronomy. We're moving to our solar system. In fact, we're going to break it up into two units. We've got the inner, the terrestrial planets. One unit, done, stop, pa test, pause. The outer planets, the Jovian planets, the gas giants. Can all of those test pause and then we'll do the big stuff galaxies that's all down the road so here we go with the astronomy we're going to talk about each planet individually so we got mercury venus we're going to skip earth mars we're going to replace earth with the moon so we have four bodies we're going to talk about for the terrestrial planets and we're going to talk about a little bit about the solar system as a whole and compare it. And that's where we're going to start today. So first thing, let's just open. Terrestrial planet, terra forma, ter it's earth, it's rock. Okay, the terrestrial planets are the four closest to the sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Okay, they are close to each other. Their orbits are close. Their masses are small. Yes, they're made of rock, but they're not big planets. The small radiuses, small radii, mostly rocky. That's why they're rock planets. That's why they're terrestrial. There is a solid surface to physically walk around. High density, because they're rocks. Rocks are dense. They sink in water. They don't float. Slow rotation, we're going to have to talk about that. We know Earth's rotation, but we've got to compare that to a gas giant, a Jovian planet, Jupiter. Okay, we've got to compare that to the gas giants. And how do clouds rotate? How do you track that? Isn't that just, okay, we'll talk about that when we get there. Weak magnetic fields. All the planets have strong magnetic fields. You might be surprised by that, but they're not very strong on the rock planets. Very few moons. What do you mean very few? Mars has two moons. They're tiny, they barely count, but Earth has one. When you get out here to the Jovian planets, the exact opposite, dozens of moons per planet even. No rings. You might immediately think Saturn's the only one with rings. Nope. All the gas giants have rings. We only talk about Saturn's because Saturn's are so much more visible than the others. Okay. Big picture, the differences between all the terrestrial planets, which are the first four we're going to discuss, and then the Jovian planets. All right? So, let's go in here. Let's look at some scale. Okay? Ooh, that's so super exciting. Well, look here. This is maybe interesting. Maybe you know it. Maybe you like it. Maybe you don't. Orbital semi-major axis, in parentheses, AU. What in the world is that Greek right there? It's not. Earth is 1 AU. One, ast stands for astronomical unit. Space is massive. Space is huge, and it's so big we need new units because inches, feet, meters, miles don't work anymore. There's just too many of them. It doesn't make sense. So the average distance from Earth to the sun, we call that 1. It's one astronomical unit. So the average distance from Earth to the Sun is now one. So guess what? Mars is one and a half, 1.5 times as far from the Sun as Earth is. Venus is 0.72. It's almost three quarters the distance from Earth to the Sun. Mercury is about 0 0.39. So it's almost 40% of the way. So if you drew, if you put the Sun, you put Earth and you have this timeline, Mercury is going to be about 40% of the way out. Venus is going to be almost three quarters and Earth is going to be at one. Mars is going to be at one and a half if you drew this number line. That's what these are. So Jupiter is five times further. Saturn is nine and a half. Uranus is 20 times and Neptune is 30 times. Again, the terrestrial planets are very closely spaced. The Jovian planets are very far apart. Period in Earth years. How long does it take to go around the sun? Well, we just use Earth year for once. So one Earth year. Mars takes about two years to go around the sun. Two Earth years. It's one Martian trip around the sun, but it's two Earth years. Mercury takes about a quarter of a year. Three months to go 
go around the sun every three months. Birthday, 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 birthday. If you were on Mercury, okay? Earth masses, all right? So you could see how big or how small that Jupiter's 318 times the size of Earth, all those kind of radiuses. Number of known satellites, what's that? That's not satellites like you launch in a rocket. That is moons. Earth has one. Look at this. Mars has two. That's it. All the outer planets have at least a dozen. 13 for Neptune, over two dozen, five dozen. I mean, it's just, everybody's got moons. Rotational period, density. You can tell the difference in the high density rock and then the lower density gas giants. All of those things kind of represent that table we had just looked at. All right. How do we know what we know? Here's a pretty picture of Saturn. There's an early telescope. Here's the behemoth. For like 75 years, this was the biggest telescope. The, the size of that, the diameter is six foot across on there. It's a giant telescope. It's the way observations were made for years. Uh, that's, that's, that. that's all that is. We have walked on the moon. This is the rover Spirit on Mars. I got a whole story. When we get to Mars, we're going to talk about Spirit and Opportunity. All right, here we go. This is the shape of our solar system. We talked about everything orbits really, really flat. So if we look out at the sun, the path the sun takes across our sky, if you follow at night, the moon will take just about that same path. So will all of these other planets. Look how flat they are on the ecliptic. Remember the ecliptic was that imaginary line that represents the path the sun and our sky because we're important and we're the center, but we're not, right? That's what that is. All right, we skip two images here because that just shows it. Which means that here you have a near conjunction. All of these make this line of this arc going across the sky. Um, I, I forget the date of this picture, but you've got se all the you've got several of the planets lined up in a very near, nearly a straight line because they all orbit the sun fairly flat. All right. Let's see. To scale, sun is big. Okay. We know that. That's size. Some of those pictures, there's lots of interesting ways to see that stuff. There are lots of other meteoroids, asteroid, meteorites, asteroids. We'll talk about those later in the year. Let's get out of this. Satellites. Other things. How do we know what we know? How have we, have we been to the planet? Because beyond the moon, we haven't left this planet. Maybe, maybe in your lifetime we'll step foot on Mars. That would be incredible. I'm all for it. But we've sent satellites. We've sent rovers. We've sent this. Here's the thing. When you start doing that, you have to worry about, oh, all of these things are moving. So when you launch in November of 1973, you have to figure out that Venus used to be here. Now, by the time you get to February, Venus is now over here in 74. So you pass by Venus and you get a gravity assist, which means it's going to change your orbit. It's going to pull you in and it's going to fling you around. And then you're going to go right by Mercury. And then you're going to come around and again and again. And you could come around. Now, Venus is moving, but you can get all these flybys. All the orbital mechanics for these satellites have to be planned out, and there are launch windows. If you miss your window, you get it's years. Right now, Earth and Mars are on the same side of the sun. They're very close. In fact, just last week, they were as close as they will be for two years. Because the Earth's going to go around faster, and then Mars, right, is going to is going to will lap Mars because we're going around the sun faster. If we're on opposite sides, when you launch the rocket, you should launch maybe backwards and run into Mars this way. Because if you try and catch it this way, Mars is running away from your rocket. It, there's all these mechanics you've got to think of. So let's go to, you know, that's people building a satellite. That's an older one. Cool satellites being launched by the space shuttle. Nope, not the picture I'm looking for. There's how to get to Mars. Nope. I'm looking here, it's in the discovery ones. It's further down. 16, 18, there we go. 
Sorry about that. If a planet's moving this way and a spacecraft comes in like this, two things are going to happen. It's going to start to curve around the planet, but it's also going to pick up speed. When we did that FET, FET.Colorado.edu, and you did that gravity web, you may have seen a couple of these things. You could get the moon to do weird loops around Earth and stuff. Just do the same thing with spacecraft. Here it is. Voyager 1 and 2. These two objects are the furthest man-made objects, period. They're still traveling. They're still tracking. They're still communicating with Earth. They were launched. There's a typo that was not 1917. That should say 1977. They were launched in August and then in September of 1977, and they did the grand tour. They hit Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Not both of them. Voyager 1 actually launched after Voyager 2 caught up past. Here we go. Voyager 1, after it hit Saturn, and they were satisfied that Voyager 2 was on track, they took Voyager 1 and went up and out. So if all the planets are orbiting flat in this disk, Voyager 1 went up and out this way. Voyager 2 spiraled around and went out that way. The planets were not going to hit this alignment again for a long, 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 long time. These two objects are really incredible. Okay, So if you look, this is where Jupiter was when we launched. This is where Jupiter was when we went by. This is Saturn at launch and Saturn when we went by, Uranus at launch, and then when you went by, and then Neptune when you launched, and Neptune when you went by. So that's a fairly smooth arc to get out and catch all of those planets because nothing else has been out there. We've had a couple satellites individually. We've had Cassini went straight to Saturn recently. That's awesome. But when these launched, it launched in 1977 and in 1989, it just made it to Neptune. These are still going. In fact, if you, you can Google this and go to the NASA website, you can get a current estimate. It will show you speed and distance from Earth or from the sun, and it's just increasing just going on up. It's incredible. On the sides of these two things, gold records with instructions for how to play it. So if an alien does find this, there is a gold record on here with uh, sights, sounds, pictures, all these recordings on Earth, from Earth. Hello in dozens of languages. Welcome uh, music from Chuck Berry to Gregorian chants to Beethoven, um, blues. It just It's all on there and instructions on how to play it. It's a really cool story behind the record. Uh, Carl Sagan was involved. It, it's just a cool story. And these two things are still going. They're pretty awesome. They're running on nuclear power. They're just going. The only thing that's going to stop them is getting cold. And that nuclear power is not going to let that happen for a long, long time. All right, guys. Scale of the universe. We're going to hit Mercury. That's what the next one is. But this is scale and overall compare contrast of the whole solar system. By the way, the net definition of solar system, thank you for sticking to the end. Our sun. Anything that gravity causes to orbit our sun, comet, asteroid, meteorite, whatever, planet, whatever, eight planets, a couple dozen moons, like asteroids, meteorites, comets, all of that is the solar system. 